before I finish I want to you know delve a little bit just 5 minutes into the question of where are we in India in this context. Okay. Now, in terms of AI for India, I think the story is relatively clearer. Of course, West successes may not always apply. The Teslas that can work in uh, um, on, as, and drive on the roads of US streets, I can bet you they cannot drive in the in the streets of India, right? They, with the cows and the cyclists and the crazy uh, people uh, who drive on the wrong side of the road, it requires something more than AI intelligence to be able to drive it and or even you know uh, west drivers go crazy crossing the road forget driving in India. So, we will not everything that works in, in uh, other nations is going to work for us, but definitely lots of opportunities and possibilities for the use of AI in India. For example, in education we all know that in tier 2, tier 3 cities we have a real dearth of good teachers, well can AI augment them? Can AI understand each student much more carefully understand where their knowledge holes are, provide information and feedback back to the parents and teachers so that they can be handled? I bet you we can do all of that. Smart cities can make use of AI. We have a huge push on smart cities. When should a light go green? When should it go red? Where should we have more development? What kind of development? When should we build roads? All of that can be done in a more data driven way. Microsoft already is starting to use technology in India where they give timely advice to the farmers about specific farming practices based on the weather conditions, water conditions. Uh, we know that in many many villages we do not have good doctors, sometimes people die just because doctors cannot reach them in time. Can we you know, use AI there to uh, augment the doctors and, and make sure that the person is stable until the doctor shows up. There is a lot we can do in all these scenarios and AI for developing world will have a lot of role to play. Uh, but I want to also talk about our uh, neighbor and often a country that we compare ourselves to and how they are responding to the AI uh, revolution. You may be surprised to know that the Chinese president in his new year address had uh, uh, lots of books here and two of those books were on AI. And one of those books was written by uh, uh, Pedro Domingos who happens to be our own Parag Singla's advisor. And uh, China and the amount of research it is doing in AI and the amount of push it is giving to AI is unbelievable. And slowly it is starting to surpass even the United States in its productivity at top venues in artificial intelligence. This graph shows the number of journal articles mentioning deep learning. Uh, uh, which have been cited and China has already surpassed United States there. China has a huge push to become a world leader in AI by 2030, to be at par with the best very soon in by 2020 that is their plan. And I think they are well on track because AAAI and HKI are some of the top two conferences in uh, artificial intelligence and uh, uh, the highest number of papers as well uh, accepted papers and highest number of submissions both came from China and they surpassed un United States this year. KDD is a top uh, data um, mining and uh, machine learning conference and they run a competition and last competition there were two tracks and in each track they gave three awards first, second, third and all six of the awards were won by Chinese groups, Chinese teams. And this is a worldwide competition, Indians can participate, United States can participate, anybody can participate. China is putting in 2.1 billion dollars for an AI industrial park which will be 55 hectares huge. I read uh, in reports that they are all getting uh, AI researchers to come back to China. They have been doing this for a long time, but now it is sort of paying fruit and the current salary offers are to the tune of 1 million dollars per person for senior hires. This is for private companies. Now, when we think about this kind of revolution and this kind of push in China, it begs the question where are we in India? And the story in comparison seems rather glim. Of course, uh, uh, we are doing very well for ourselves, we are improving better than where we are much better than where we were, but there is a huge demand and we are just not meeting it. For example, there is 60 percent rise expected in jobs in AI in 2018 and we are not training enough students. Uh, 
we are paying a good salary uh, in India. Our average salaries are about 1 crore per annum for somebody with 8 to 15 years experience. That is not bad, but when you compare this, this is $150,000 per, uh, per year and it does not match up to $1 million that Chinese uh, top people might be getting. And it also does not match up to the, the high salaries that people are drawing in the US and elsewhere. So, it be, gives not, does not give them financial incentive to move back to India. So, they need to come back to India for other reasons, but financial is not one of them. Okay. And as we all know, many of these times capitalism actually becomes stronger than anything else. Think about research. We have about 30 researchers in the country who can be claimed to be publishing at top venues. Now, that is not bad, maybe 10 years ago we had 5, but neither are these 30 researchers publishing very regularly at top venues nor is 30 a good enough number. We need maybe hundreds of them, if not thousands, in order to uh, be at par with the, with the world, but we are very, very far away. Our startups are doing fine. There is a lot of startups in AI space. Whenever I talk to a company, there is a lot of talk about AI and chatbots and this, that and the other. But if you do the numbers, do the arithmetic, you find that over three and a half years from 2014 to mid of 2017, the total amount of financial investment that happened in Indian startups was to the tune of 100 million dollars. Not bad, but when you compare it against Andrew Ng's recently launched private VC fund, it itself has 150 million dollars. And this graph particularly shows you the amount of funding that is coming in for different countries and this is India, the third one. Second one is China and the last one is United States. Clearly, we are not competing against the world. So, there is an urgent need to find talent. I strongly believe that talent needs to come first before anything else needs to materialize. Once the right research talent comes in here, it will train the right students. When the right students get trained, it, they will take the engineering jobs, they will start the startups and the ecosystem would flourish. But at that, at this present moment in time, we are sort of losing the battle with respect to the fast moving pace in the world and the more we delay ourselves, the more it is going to become hard for us to catch up. And given that IT is one very important part of our uh, financial success, it really is important that we put some 